Good morning, and what a pleasure it is to be joined by so many passionate uh, physical activity advocates today as we pursue our collective goal of an active society. From the gym floor apprentice right through to our sports minister, Tracy Crouch, who spoke so authentically just then, every single one of us in the physical activity sector has an equally important role to play in carrying our movement forward. We're all here because we believe it's essential to get more people more active more often. Whereas last year's summit was about setting a vision for an active nation, this year we focus on how to deliver this practically and at pace. Shifting political priorities is a complex process at the best of times, least of all when Brexit is dominating the Westminster bandwidth. On behalf of government, as Tracy said, I recently did a duty of care review into how sporting organisations can do more to safeguard the welfare of the athletes they work with. It was a challenging piece of work requiring great levels of patience, perseverance and empathy to identify solutions to a highly emotive topic. Perhaps the most important aspect to take away was that in pursuit of meaningful political progress, honesty and clarity of the current position are essential. With this in mind, let me be honest and clear of the current position. Politics is failing in its duty of care to the British public to support physical activity. By deferring key decisions and ducking pressing issues around our physical inactivity crisis, politicians are unwittingly signing the death warrant of millions of Britons. The fact is, Westminster is out of touch with the wider population, out of touch with how people vote, out of touch with how people feel. We've seen that with unexpected outcomes of the referendum and general election. We've seen that with badly misjudged responses to human tragedies. We're seeing that in resounding failure to embed physical activity into society. There remains a lack of debate, focus, and emphasis on physical activity and the valuable role it can play in society. As someone who works in Westminster as a crossbench peer, I've got a pretty good idea why. It's because tackling inactivity is not seen as an immediate problem because it doesn't fit neatly into a five-year election cycle. Nowhere was this plainer than during the election campaign this year when there was a collective failure from political parties to recognise and discuss the importance of physical activity. And yet, other big-ticket issues, the ageing population, the crisis in social care, the future of the NHS, childhood obesity, mental health, disconnected and isolated communities, all rightly received the oxygen of national debate. There's a failure to recognise that physical activity is the golden thread that runs right through those societal issues and holds the key to tackling them. It's like Westminster is sitting on the winning lottery ticket but is just too timid to claim the prize. For far too long, it's been the case that sport and activity are placed in a box for DCMS to deal with, while for other departments, activity is just an afterthought. We're lucky to have a sports minister in Tracy Crouch who sees the bigger picture, and her landmark sporting future strategy set out a bold vision for how to upweight the role of physical activity in society. Tracy's report should be on the desk of every politician and civil servant because it applies to every single person in Westminster. There is much progress still to be made, but there are pockets of political change which we at UK Active are excited about supporting. Justice Minister Dr Philip Lee joins us today and his department wants to use sport and activity to achieve positive outcomes for adult offenders and young people in the justice system. Meanwhile, the Office of Disability Issues, which resides in the Department of Work and Pensions, is working with UK Active to help more disabled people unlock the benefits of physical activity. This work has been championed by another of our speakers here today, Disabilities Minister Penny Mordant. As a lifetime champion of inclusion for disabled people, I'm delighted we've found a government partner in Penny as committed to physical activity as we are. Those in attendance represent glimmers of hope, people in power who understand our value to society. But the fact remains that this agenda must fully break out of its Westminster box so that all government departments understand, integrate and implement programmes that embrace physical activity. As a member of the Lords, I know I get frustrated sometimes by the pace of change in Westminster. I'm sure Tracy, Philip and Penny do too. But we can clearly see the problems 
but it also falls on us to bring solutions. There is now a great opportunity for UK Active with its members and partners to position physical activity alongside other, perhaps higher profile issues in a way that will seize the attention of decision makers, commentators and the public. We must show that physical activity is the golden thread that runs through society. This is the message which we must take to government, offering our sectors active involvement in addressing the most complex issues that society faces. Today, I want to talk about values. In the wake of recent events, people are starting to ask, what is it that we most value in our communities? I ask myself, what do I value? I value my fam family and those closest to me. I value the home we share, the community that we live and that we work in. As a family, do we feel safe inhabiting this community? As a disabled person, can I easily navigate it? It seems many of us share similar values. And yet, there has been too little policy emphasis, and for far too long, on what contributes to the health and happiness of a person, a family, a community. Somewhere along the way, politics has lost sight of the things that we value most. And it's time to redress that. Steve reminded us of Simon Stevens' speech earlier. We know we have this miracle cure in our hands. Our task now is to emphatically demonstrate how this golden thread combines society together and heal division. In what is fast becoming a secular society for many, physical activity has become a national religion, something we love and cherish, something we practice weekly to give us strength, something we turn to in times of light and dark, Something that provides solace, routine, and a chance of renewal. Something that serves as the glue, holding communities together. Physical activity is the golden thread that runs through communities. When communities were rocked this summer by awful tragedies like the Manchester bombing and the fire at Grenville Tower, it was in leisure centres like Holmes Chapel, Kensington, Swiss Cottage and Westway where people gathered to make sense of the atrocities and provide charity to those who needed it most. Far from being places to simply gym and swim, these centres are pillars of society, steadfastly supporting communities through thick and thin. But many of these pillars are crumbling in need of urgent repair and renovation to ensure they remain fit for purpose, fit for those communities they serve. And that's why last year at this very summit, I led calls for a £1 billion investment to transform ageing leisure facilities into the state-of-the-art wellness hubs. These wellness hubs, already in action across the country, combine swimming pools, gyms, sports halls, with GP drop-in centres, libraries, police services, and create a one-stop shop for public <coughs> services. Wellness hubs can become the preventative front line of the NHS, easing the strain on doctors and nurses while freeing up beds. We know the future of our sector and the NHS are intertwined. Put simply, if prevention over cure doesn't prevail, the NHS will fail. But why limit ourselves? The impact of our sector stretches far beyond health. It's the golden thread that touches every aspect. Words are a start, but we're committed to building the evidence base that irrefutably proves this impact. Today, we publish new research on the social value of physical activity within our sector that validates my belief. It shows that community leisure facilities are essential to our physical health. It also highlights the broader impact these sites have on communities, making a telling contribution to wider agendas such as education, crime, and general well-being. Through our mission to bring wellness hubs into every community, we want to lay the tracks for the future journey of our sector, a future where public, private, and third sector organisations all play a role at the front line of tackling some of society's biggest challenges. We have too much to offer to stand on the sidelines. When it comes to wellness hubs, we now have a coalition of support behind this movement, bringing together key stakeholders spanning the construction sector, private sector investors, local and national government, and of course, our own physical activity sector. Special mention must go to Sport England CEO Jenny Price and Director of Property Charles Johnson, who've really been instrumental in driving this forward, putting us right on the cusp of something special. We are tantalisingly close to making this dream a reality. And I, along with the entire team behind this, will be working hand-in-hand -hand with government uh, to turn this into reality in 2018. It's a bold vision. It's also a complex, multi-layered project, which will take years to fully implement. 
but it will have a transformative impact on the sector, demonstrating the all-encompassing impact physical activity can have on communities. It will firmly establish us, us as the preventative front line of the health service and grow our sector as a result. As Steve said, today is about mapping out the future frontiers for our sector, looking beyond our impact on health and well-being. By emphasising the role of physical activity beyond traditional boundaries, we can forge new links and unlock new partnerships in exciting new areas. One area with latent potential is how we heal the societal rifts caused by crime. The golden thread of physical activity runs right through our justice system. As we'll hear later, Justice Minister Dr Philip Lee is conducting a judicial review into the relationship between crime and physical activity. This landmark investigation will explore the power of physical activity to prevent crime, improve the well-being of inmates, as well as helping them reintegrate into society and reduce the risk of reoffending. This may sound like a distant dream, but the transformative power of physical activity is real, and we will hear the perfect example of this today. Our keynote speaker this afternoon is John McAvoy, a remarkable man who went from serving a life sentence behind iron bars to becoming an iron man, who is now one of Britain's foremost long-distance triathletes. It's clear that physical activity can provide a second chance for those who've taken the wrong path in life. But how about setting them up on the right path in the first place? As a mother and a parliamentarian, the children's activity agenda is something I care passionately about. The golden thread of physical activity runs through the future prospects, health and happiness of our children. Today's young people are the least active ever, and we need a serious shake-up of the school day to save Generation Active from a lifetime of ill health. Building activity back into our children's daily lives at school is vital, but in many ways the challenge is keeping kids active outside of school hours. PE forms just two of 168 hours in a child's week, and that's during term time. There is a far bigger game for us to play, and our ambitions should reflect this. Our own UK active research has shown how school summer holidays drive a sharp wedge between the activity levels of affluent and deprived children. It's just a six-week window, but its implications on a child's physical health, mental well-being, and attainment reverberate across the entire year, resulting in huge inequalities between rich and poor. That's why our long-term policy call is for money from the sugar levy to go wider than the PE and sport premium and beyond the school game. This money should be used to create activity options to support families who can't afford or access the summer programmes that would maintain their children's activity levels. To end the postcode lottery which sees middle-class families in the southeast flooded with options to keep their kids active over summer, while families who are just about managing to survive see the prospects of their children suffer as a result. To tackle this, UK Active Kids is working closely with our board member and leading educationalist Adrian Packer to demonstrate this is a concept that can change the lives of children nationwide. Starting next summer, we'll work with a range of local partners across public, private and third sector to bring holiday camps to schools in certain areas of Birmingham for the first time. We will be piloting in high-need communities with a view to bringing in government and other relevant partners to scale a national solution to our child health crisis. These holiday camps will take a holistic approach to child health. They'll combine physical activity offerings with the opening of the school kitchens to provide nutritious food and education, along with strong mental well-being components. This vital strand will be supported by our charity partner, The Mix, who will help educate our workforce on the ground so they're fully equipped to deal with the unique mental health challenges that today's young people face. These holiday camps are radical in the sense they seek to address issues that have traditionally only been dealt with in silos. Only a holistic health strategy that brings together diet, physical activity and mental health can truly transform the well-being of our children. We as a sector are uh, physical activity advocates because it's our area of expertise, but we're pragmatic enough to acknowledge that this is one piece of a bigger puzzle. We should never lose sight that we are a vital piece nonetheless. Physical activity should be the cornerstone of any child health strategy for the simple fact that it's fun. I mean, let's be real. Kids are never going to turn up to a nutritional session for the fun of it or a seminar on mindfulness. But by hooking them in with football or freestyle dance class, we might just have a chance of showing them the merits of a balanced and healthy lifestyle. 18 months on from the Childhood Obesity Plan, 
there's an opportunity through its evolution to be bolder and more radical in our approach. How about a child health strategy that places equal emphasis on mental health, diet, and physical activity? How about the responsibility for this sitting with a single government department so that no longer can the key components of a young person's well-being be allowed to slip through the cracks of bureaucracy? We simply cannot afford to play politics when it comes to the health of our children. Rather than just thinner, we need to support children to be healthier and happier by tapping into the mental, social and physical benefits of regular and sustained physical activity. That's why it's more vital than ever before for us to bring together a broad coalition of partners, as we will in Birmingham, to shape a future for our children that doesn't inevitably lead to disease and ill health. We're most vulnerable when we're young, or when we're old. And it's no coincidence this is also when physical activity brings the most benefit. The golden thread of physical activity runs right through health and social care. Today, we unveil our new report with Life Fitness called Moving More, Aging Well. The report sheds light on Britain's looming ageing crisis and reveals just one in five English local authorities have a physical activity strategy for care homes. It also highlights the huge role of our sector in tackling this, as getting over 65s active could save the NHS 12 billion and prevent 600,000 cases of major disease over the next 10 years. Through our thousands of locations, hundreds of thousands of staff, and total commitment to our shared mission, mission we already sit on a national activity therapy service with the potential to prevent a full-blown ageing crisis. Together, we can ensure every patient contact with our health and social care system signposts people to activity, whether that's talking to a nurse or reading a prescription slip. By making every contact count and bringing together a broad array of partners, we can make activity the natural choice for all ages. We can transform the culture of the healthcare system from sickness to wellness, from a mindset of encouraging the poorly to rest up to one that says, let's get moving, and offers a supporting hand to do so. Our sector's future will be, to be determined by how bold and collaborative we are in our approach. And that's why we're here. Physical activity is the golden thread that runs through today's UK Active National Summit. Let today be the day when each of us leaves with clarity and purpose on the part we must play in this golden thread. Let today be the day when we realign our actions when the things we truly value most. And let today be the day when we as a sector fully realise our true potential. We are physical activity providers and enablers, but we are also so much more. You will hear stories today that underline the strength and breadth of our impact across society. We are the antidote to depression, dementia, and a myriad of other mental health issues. We're the outstretched hands that include disabled people in society rather than marginalise. We're the central pillar of prevention and the only hope for the future of the NHS. We are the elixir of healthy life for an ageing population. We are the powerhouse behind a fighting fit workforce and productive economy. We are the cornerstone of a hopeful and healthy childhood. We are the creators of hundreds of thousands of jobs and a vibrant, thriving industry. We are the golden thread that runs through all of society. Thank you.